welcome to the 25th Sunday in our many time. Before Mass begins, let us read the prayer of St. Joseph, which was on the inside of the front cover of the Missal Man. Dear St. Joseph, we consecrate ourselves to your honor and give ourselves to you, that you may always be our Father, our protector, and our guide in the way of salvation. Obtain for us great purity of heart and a fervent love of the material life. After your example, may we act for the greater glory of God in union with the sacred heart of Jesus and the man of the Christ. The blessed Saint Joseph, pray for us that we may share in the peace and joy of heaven. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our celebrants for this Mass, Father Frank and our Deacon, Deacon Dan.
For our opening hymn, please join in singing hymn number 204, We Gather Together, 204. and masses this evening, Julia and Frank Zeflin, Sr. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. Amen. As we prepare to celebrate the mystery of Christ's love this evening, let us recall to mind our sins. Lord Jesus, you came to reconcile us to one another and to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you heal the wounds of sin and division. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you intercede for us with your Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. of your sacred law upon love of you and of our neighbor, grant that by keeping your precepts we may merit to attain 
eternal life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. reading from the book of wisdom. No one can say, let us be set the just one. Because he is obnoxious to us, he sets himself against our doings, reproaches us for transgressions of the law, and charges us with violations of our training. Let us see whether his words be true. Let us find out what will happen to him for if the just one be the Son of God, God will defend him and deliver him from the hand of his foes. With him in a torch, let us put the just one to the test, that we may have proof of his gentleness and try his patience. Let us condemn him to a shameful death, for according to his own words, God We'll take care of him. The word of the Lord. St. James. Beloved, where jealousy and selfish ambition exist, there is disorder in every foul practice. But the wisdom from above is first of all pure, then peaceable, gentle, compact, full of mercy and good fruits, without inconsistency or insincerity. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace for those who cultivate peace. 
Where do the wars and where do the conflicts among you come from? Is it not from your passions that make war within your members? You covet but do not possess. You kill and envy but you cannot obey. You fight and wage war. You do not possess because you do not ask. You ask but do not receive because you ask wrongly. You spend it on your passions. The word of the Lord. Gospel according to Mark. Jesus and his disciples left from there and went on a journey to Galilee. But he did not wish anyone to know about it. He was teaching to his disciples and telling them, The Son of Man is to be handed over to men, and they will kill him. And three days after his death, the Son of Man will rise. But they did not understand the saying, and they were afraid to question him. They came to Capernaum, and once inside the house, he began to ask them, What were you arguing about on the way? But they remained silent. They had been discussing amongst themselves on the way who was the greatest. Then he sat down, called the twelve, and said to them, If anyone wishes to be first, he shall be the last of all and the servant of all. Taking a child, he placed them in their, in their midst, and putting his arms around him, he said to them, Whoever receives one child such as this in my name receives me, and whoever receives me receives not me, but the one who sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Each year in December, the church picks a theme or a focus for the year. December 8th of 2020, Pope Francis unveiled it would be the year of St. Joseph. And with all the unique things happening around the world, we finally have time this weekend that we set aside to celebrate at all the masses and we have a speaker on Monday to celebrate the life of St. Joseph. <clears throat> Tradition tells us that after Jesus ascended to heaven, Mother Mary lived with St. John the Apostle in the area that we now know as Turkey. Remember the scripture at the foot of the cross? Jesus says, Woman, behold your son, and to the disciple, behold your mother. Well, this is the only statement that St. John's Gospel records, and it's the only one that he makes about Mary. John was expected to take her in and protect her since St. Joseph had passed, uh, passed on. Uh, just before Jesus' public ministry, it's believed. So he does the same thing about St. Joseph. He only mentions him once at the beginning of his gospel when he says, Jesus of Nazareth, son of Joseph. And that's all that's mentioned by St. John. So you would think after living with the Mother Mary for many years and hearing all the stories from, from Our Lady, he surely would want to have shared all these. But instead, John focuses the whole gospel 
except these couple little snippets on Jesus. And I believe in Mary and Joseph's humility, that's what they wanted the whole gospel. Of course, we focused on their son and his mission of redemption. So unfortunately, because of that, we know very little of their life. One of the major themes that John points out for Joseph is that he was to adopt Jesus as his own son. Well, fast forward to today, through our baptism, we're adopted into God's family the same way. So Joseph says, yes, he would take on the child as his own child, meaning Jesus to be his adopted son. And that's a perfect precursor for our new way of life being brought into God's holy family. Adoption and grace work together to create the same end goal by being grafted into God's holy family. Early on, when Mary and Joseph were betrothed, right, we hear this story every Christmas. Betrothed meant married, but not yet one flesh. It was customary to be betrothed or really married, but they would live apart for the first year. So when Joseph finds out that Mary is pregnant, he doesn't seem to know or understand the meeting that occurred between the angel Gabriel and Mary. So being the holy man that he was, he had two options. The first was to divorce her quietly, as scripture tells us, or if he went with option two, which scripture doesn't really define at that point, it would have been a public trial, public divorce, and it would have ended with Stony, Mary being stoned because it was assumed that she would have committed adultery. And again, as we know the story, Jesus, Joseph didn't want that to happen. But it wasn't until the angel had to confirm for him God's plan by taking Mary into his home and raising God's son as his own. But of course, God had this all planned out. He planned that an angel would come to Joseph and give him in a dream the guidance he needed. We all have dreams. All kinds of things play out in our dreams. While the term dream is used in the scriptural text, I see it more as a vision or an interaction with an angel of God. Something beyond the dreams that we would know and have every night. So Joseph knew the difference, of course, and he had two others along the way. When I was discerning as a young man what to do with my life, after many conversations uh, with my mother, she started saying, Danny, God is not coming down to write on a wall for you. She was referencing the scripture text in the book of Daniel, where a giant hand appears out of nowhere and did write on the wall for the king of the Babylonians at that time. And he chased around looking for someone to interpret what is this writing on the wall. And of course, uh, Daniel had to come in and he interpreted the, interpreted the writing for the king of Babylonians. Of course, I would say to my mother, it would be so much easier if he just wrote on the wall for me to what I do with my life. Wouldn't it be fun if he did that for us, right? Sent us a text. Dear Dan, it's God. Here's what you need to do next. It'd be so much easier. The key with the story of St. Joseph, though, is that he obediently followed the angel's direction. And he trusted. And that's the key word for the day. He trusted. The things we hear about in St. Joseph in Scripture always center around trust. So when we list the things that St. Joseph, the times he's mentioned in the Gospels, here they are. Three times in the context of angels and dreams. He's betrothed to Mary two times, is listed there. Carpenter is listed as once. Descendant of David twice. Just or righteous man once. And the foster father of Jesus four times. Only 13 times in all four Gospels, St. Joseph is mentioned. And in all these texts, trust is the key word tied to St. Joseph. He had to trust the angels and the visions that the plan that God had set out would be fulfilled. He had to trust that Mary had not been unfaithful, but truly overshadowed by the Holy Spirit. He had to trust that his work as a carpenter would suffice to raise up a family. He had to trust that from his lineage came the Messiah. The Gospel of Luke shows Joseph, Joseph's lineage back to Adam and Eve all the way back to Adam and Eve. He had to trust that God called him, even though he might have felt unworthy, he still called him to be a holy man and raise the son of God. And last, 
he called to trust the plan that he was to be the foster father of Jesus, to adopt him as his own son. Again, the perfect example of what our baptism becomes, how we are adopted into the family of God through grace. He had to trust. Over-spiritualizing is not trust. Letting go is trust. Trust God, trust God's plan. Trust that God gave you the gut instinct that you're to use and follow. And I say gut instinct or your voice because being quieter with God is when you hear him. So the more you spend time in quiet, the more you hear and hear that tiny little voice speak inside of you and you know what to do. And how do we grow in that? How do we hear God's voice? Quiet time before mass, after mass, adoration, or as Jesus says in scripture, Go and find a quiet place in your home, close the door, and be with your Heavenly Father. Only in quiet do we hear the subtle, very quiet nudge of the Holy Spirit guiding us. Dearest Saint Joseph, pray for us and teach us how to trust like you did. Now recite our creed together. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, life from life, true God from true God, the God not made, consubstantial with the Father, who in all things for me. For our sin and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by his Holy Spirit, from the mind of the Virgin Mary, and he became man. For our saints, who stood silent upon the silent, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, and in accordance with the scriptures, he is ascended to heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And you see the God of the I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the eternal life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is the Lord and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sinners. I know the Lord for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. Trusting God in all things, let us seek his help for our church and our world. For all the baptized in the church, may God strengthen us in proclaiming the kingdom of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For government leaders, may God bless them with the strength and wisdom in supporting policies that uplift families. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who mourn the loss of a loved one, may God's enduring love and mercy and the gift of faith, bring them consolation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in our midst who are struggling financially, may the Lord grant them relief and hope. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick in this community, and for those who love them, may God grant them strength. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the faithful departed, especially Vincent Piazza, May they be soon brought to eternal peace with the Lord in heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. And for Julia and Frank Zeppelin, Sr., let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. And for our deacon Dan, for the wonderful homily he preached. And I'm not just saying that, I believe it. And 
I am inspired by it, and I'm sure everyone here is, and I'm so grateful to hear you preach. God bless you. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, 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 Lord. All these things we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please join in singing hymn number 386, The Servant Song, 386. <laughs> Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. With your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine, work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. That's Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. Receive with favor, O Lord, we pray, the offerings of your people, that what they profess with devotion and faith. May be theirs through these heavenly mysteries, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. 
Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by his birth he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering canceled out our sins. By his rising from the dead, he has opened the way to eternal life. And by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. sending down your spirit upon them like the new fall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ at the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Nelson, our Bishop, and all the clergy, Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you your son Jesus Christ through him and with him and in him O God Almighty Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit all glory and honor is yours forever and ever
the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will to live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, for the Lord of my salvation and healing. May the body of Christ be saved.
In the hymnal, please join in singing hymn number 489, O Lord, I am not worthy, 489.
collection, the collection for the prayer garden will take place next weekend. This past spring, there was significant landscaping work done, which cost $6,245. We are most grateful to the volunteers who have recently been working to maintain it. We ask that you be as generous as possible to this collection. Jolly Jews Book Club will meet on Tuesday, September the 21st at 10 a.m. in Classroom 6 of the Religious Education Building. We will be discussing leadership in turbulent times. The funeral arrangements for Vincent Piazza are as follows. A viewing will take place in our church this Friday from 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. and the funeral mass will be private. And please refer to the bulletin on our website for more announcements. Let us pray. Graciously raise up, O Lord, those you renew with this sacrament, that we may come to possess your redemption, both in mystery and in the manner of our life, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorify the Lord by your life. Happy belated birthday to Father Farsanti. Last oh, uh, well, Sunday was the birthday, Father. Thank you very much for that. Remember, remember me and Mike in your prayers, and also remember the Augustinians. We hear a lot about the diocesan clergy, but remember <laughs> myself and Father Wimmer, the great scholar and Father Aquilino Gonzalez are members of the Order of St. Augustine. And we have our stars too, by the way. Yeah. We're the third squad. But anyway, thank you very much for all your effort. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. For our closing hymn, please join in singing hymn number 564, O oh, Bless the Lord My Soul, 564. Mm -hmm. 